Hey, thanks for watching. I'm Nick Pino, Associate Editor of Home Entertainment over at Tech Radar. I'm here with Chung Nguyen from Tech Radar Pro. And we just watched the Microsoft event earlier today. It was kind of early for us West Coasters. Started 7 a.m. 7 a.m., 10 a.m. over on the East Coast. But we got to see a whole bunch of new products from Microsoft. Uh, the most exciting of which was the Surface Book, Microsoft's first laptop. We got to see a new Surface Pro 4 uh, tablet. We got to see what? Two, no, three new Lumia phones. We got to see a new Microsoft uh, smart band, right? We got to see what else? We, oh, and now we know the price for uh, the dev kit of HoloLens. So all in all, pretty exciting day. We'll roll through the announcements. Um, Chung, let's start off. Let's get this party started. Let's get this party started with the most exciting news of the day, the Surface Book. What do you think of it? What's the most exciting part for people? It's essentially a Surface Pro 4 in a bigger form factor and just a different keyboard dock. So instead of having the type cover, it has a solid machined metal unibody keyboard dock and a discrete graphics card. So you have more performance, longer battery life, and Microsoft is positioning this as a MacBook Pro killer, essentially. So you're getting a lot of compute power according to Microsoft in a very portable and mobile form factor. Okay, and starting like, let's align it, try with, let's start with price. Uh, it's 1400, right? Is that what it starts at? I think it's 1499 to start. So okay. you're looking at a $1,500 13 inch laptop. Okay, and, and, and is it gonna be capable of gaming? And is it gonna be capable of video editing? Is it gonna be capable of all that stuff? I mean, that's why people buy MacBook Pros, right? So Microsoft didn't specify which graphic or which specific series of graphics card is in the, the Surface Book, but it's an NVIDIA graphics chip. So once it's docked into the keyboard, you should have a little bit more graphics performance. Um, without the dock, you're running purely on the Intel Skylake or the new sixth generation Core i series processor. So you do have discrete graphics without the keyboard dock, but you're not gonna get the same level of performance um, using it as a tablet. Right, and that's, that's the kind of interesting part, right, is it on hooks. It, and a lot, it seems like Microsoft has used a lot of what it's learned with the, uh, the Surface tablets and integrated that into this laptop. I mean, uh, we'll talk a little bit about uh, the design of it. It's super slim, right, when it's undocked. So it's slimmer than the, um, the Surface Pro 4, which was also announced at the event. And that's primarily because Microsoft moved the USB ports and all the power and all the different ports down to the base or the, ta or the, the keyboard dock. Mm -hmm. So you're not going to find it on the, the tablet itself. So if you need to connect peripherals that aren't wireless, you're going to need to dock the tablet into the keyboard dock. So essentially, if you're a mobile professional, you'll want to travel with both pieces. Tell me about that hinge. That hinge looks super strange. It's essentially like to me from the video this morning, it looks like what Lenovo is using. I think Lenovo called it the watch band hinge on the Yoga 3 Pro. So, I mean, like once it's closed, it has a very angular, futuristic kind of wedge design that has a little bit of an opening between the tablet screen and the keyboard. So it gives it kind of a minimalist design that's kind of open and airy, I guess, in a way. Um, but it just, I mean, you can attach the, key, the, the tablet in, like, um, to use as a, 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 a laptop, mm -hmm. or you can do it the other way and use it as a, t a, a tent mode or even as a display mode to just watch your content. Very cool. So are you going to buy one? I guess, and, and, and the discussion here, are you going to buy one? I'm tempted, but at fourteen, fifteen hundred dollars, the yeah. price is on the high side for a thirteen-inch machine. But you are getting um, Microsoft um, said ounce for ounce, like one of the best laptops available in terms of performance. So if you got the bucks for it, I you're saying go say for it. Go for it. Yeah. All right. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the Surface Pro Four tablet. Uh, big changes. What are the big changes between the three and the four? Looks like an evolutionary design change rather than a revolutionary change. You're gonna see a slightly thinner form factor, but the biggest change is under the hood. You're gonna get Intel's sixth generation uh, Skylake processor. So you're gonna get a little bit 
better performance, better graphics, um, and better battery life, hopefully. Uh, the pen itself, right? There's, there's a new stylus that's coming with it? Or is it the same stylus as a 3? What's, what's happening there? Um, I think it's just a design change. It looks um, sleeker this year. Um, it's a little bit more angular. You have a new racer on the back of the pen, so you can erase content. And compared to the Apple Pencil on the iPad Pro, you don't have to recharge it as often. So Microsoft said, what, a year or two of battery life? So you should be good to go and not have to worry about recharging every day or every week. The part I like, it doesn't cost $100. So <laughs> on the Pro series, it should be included in the cost of the tablet as it has been in previous years. So you're going to get a pen out of the box. So now something I thought that was kind of ironic during the Microsoft presentation. First of all, everybody was very hyped up. The whole presentation, there's like fast talking, fast movements. It felt kind of like an elevator pitch almost. Um, but what I thought was very funny was that they called uh, the Surface Pro tablet the laptop killer and then proceeded to introduce a laptop. They're, they're like, oh, this is, the, this is the laptop killer. Hey, wait, but we actually have a laptop. I thought that was kind of humorous that they, I don't know, maybe cannibalize themselves. Do you think these two products are going to be too similar, or do you think there's enough differences between a Surface Pro for a tablet and the Surface Book that like they won't cannibalize their own business? I think there is um, quite a bit of difference between the two products. If you're looking for something that's super light, ultra mobile, you're going to go with the Surface Pro 4. But if you want a performance boost, you're definitely going to be looking at the Surface Book, which has a better, it's just better for productivity with a larger screen size. It's more lappable. It has a more traditional laptop look and feel. But if you need that tablet form factor, you can still undock it. You can still write on it. It still has the same pen as the Surface Pro 4. So you're getting a lot of the same features of the Surface Pro 4 into, I think, a more usable form factor with fewer compromises. Other stuff we saw today, we saw uh, two new Lumia flagship phones uh, and then one kind of lower end model that's, that's going to be open for everybody. So let's talk a little bit about the new phones. Uh, they're going to be running Windows 10, right? So all the products today that Microsoft introduced is to enhance or um, build upon the Windows 10 ecosystem. So with the new Lumia smartphones, you're going to have Windows 10 mobile as the operating system. So that's one of the unique selling points. And with Lumia, it looks like Microsoft is moving away from the photography-centric angle of the smartphone and into a more productivity-centric view. OK, all right. Uh, now, these phones are going to start at, what, 550 somewhere in the $500, $600 range. Does that sound right? Yeah, I mean, they're flagship phones, and they're meant to compete in that space. Um, I think Microsoft announced liquid cooling in the Oh, phone, yeah, what was so. up? So, yeah, there's liquid cooling, and then there's two antennas built into the phone. Uh, yeah, what's, what's going on? So the antenna, it just helps um, the phone receive better reception depending on you know, which hand you're holding it or how you're holding it. So if you remember iPhone 4 and antenna gate, oh, yeah. um, where you're blocking reception if you're holding the phone the wrong way, um, hopefully you won't experience that with the new Lumia flagships. Um, liquid cooling, it seems like Microsoft is trying to push the Qualcomm processors further with these phones, especially with the desktop UI, you're getting multitasking, you're getting um, app switchers, and these are desktop class performance, and it's not just the same like multitasking that you see on iPhone or Android. So you're getting a little bit more performance and a little bit more bang for your buck if you're a business user. Uh, there's new Microsoft Smart Band. Uh, it includes one new sensor, taking us from 10 sensors to 11 sensors. Uh, so now you have an elevation sensor, so if you're doing mountain biking, you can know how not only how far you've traveled, but how high you've also biked up. So if you're a fitness enthusiast, this should be a bit of a welcome addition to the band. Okay. Uh, and now it's going to include more apps, right? So the first one just launched with what, the Starbucks app? The Starbucks, so you can pay using the display on your app and now um, you can call up Uber, and there are a number of different apps that are integrated with Microsoft Band. What are some of the other ones besides Uber? Do you remember if it's uh... I know Facebook is included. There's also Twitter, so you can check the latest Twitter messaging. Um, Cortana is also 
included, so you can use um, Cortana to uh, set reminders and appointments using just your voice. Okay, and now Cortana is coming to iOS and Android, isn't that, that's right? Yeah, so Microsoft Band will work across different platforms. It's going to work with um, the Microsoft Health app, so you can see it on both mobile and on the web. Um, if you have a PC or even a Surface Pro 4 or a Surface Book, you can see all your health data that way. Okay. We now know the price of the HoloLens, it's, or, or at least the HoloLens developer kit. I should, I should specify. It's a lot of money. $3,000. $3,000. Now, uh, that's, that's going to be uh, a kind of pricey purchase for a lot of companies. But do you think this is more for the enterprise user? Is this more for companies or more for consumers? What's your take on this? Um, during the keynote, Microsoft showed a, a virtual reality, kind of augmented reality game through Project X-Ray. So you, get, you have, um, you're able to see yourself interacting in that game, attacking robots and aliens. Um, but Microsoft hasn't been shy about trying to pitch this product towards the enterprise space. So if you're a mechanic, you can work on your car and hopefully see in the display how the, um, the, the manual for your car would look. So you would be able to more efficiently repair your car without having to look at a book or turn to a computer. Right, and they, I remember one of the first demos they ever showed was them using Skype, right? So mm -hmm. it's like, if I didn't know how to fix something, I could call up a friend who did. Uh, we're in the Skype window, they're able to see what I'm seeing, and they'll be able to kind of like walk me through the repair. Um, but really quickly, the demo they showed today uh, was real life Mega Man. It's like the, the closest description I could have uh, the guy was holding some sort of peripheral, peripheral. We don't, I don't know what that peripheral was. It, An arm protector, arm shield, and he had like a remote control in his hands. So. What was that remote control, do you know? Um, I'm not too sure, but I guess it helps with the gameplay. So. Right, so, so the HoloLens recognizes like, oh hey, you're holding this remote. I'm going to overlay this like hand cannon on your arm uh, and, and now you're going to use this to kind of shoot down some enemies. The guy was like dodging in a very awkward way. I love the awkward dodging um, to kind of take down these enemies. So you're right, there's, there's some game stuff, there's some enterprise uses, so maybe it's a little mixed messaging at this point. Maybe it's for, I don't know, both? But Whoever like, can afford it. But I mean, like unlike Oculus, which requires a high-end PC with you know, capable graphics and processing power, this is an inclusive system, so you don't need to attach it to a phone or to a desktop or laptop. Um, so essentially, it's kind of like Google Glass, but I'm not sure if it's meant to be taken out into the public or to be used on the streets like Google Glass is, but you don't need to connect it to any other peripheral for it to work. So that's something to also consider when you're looking at the price. Oh, that's true, right? Because, yeah, if you wanted to jump into the Oculus, you would need that gaming PC, which is probably going to be, I don't know, $1,400 purchase. The last bit of news we're going to roll through here is Xbox One news. Uh, Microsoft said today that there's been over 100 hours of streaming from the Xbox One to PC, uh, which is pretty exciting because this information, or sorry, this update just rolled out a few months ago. Uh, we now know that Windows 10 is going to come to Xbox One in November, and uh, with it, backwards compatibility is going to come so people can pop in Xbox 360 games and it will download from the store. I'm looking forward to going back and playing some Xbox 360 games on my Xbox One. That's it for us today. For all the news and reviews you need to know about, keep it locked on TechRadar.